I was uh, standing in the hallway speaking with uh, with Assistant Principal Miss Hester, and we were deciding, you know, where I would be at that morning since we had voter registration, voters going coming in and out yesterday, and. Um, my station usually when I get to work at eight o'clock in the morning, I go directly to the cafeteria and just help monitor the cafeteria. And uh, it was about five minutes to eight. I was talking to, like I said, Miss Hester in front of the library. And first, she, we were going to have me just stationed there since there's a lot of public coming in and out. And as soon as we decided that, then we heard screaming coming out of the cafeteria. So we took off in that direction. How far from the cafeteria were you? That's probably 40 yards, maybe. So pretty, so, pretty close. Uh, well, halfway down the school. That's half the distance. Uh, what did you find when you got there? As I, as I approached the cafeteria, like I say, a lot of the children were still running out. And when I, got, when I first got into the cafeteria, I saw a, a subject standing there wearing a uh, clown mask and holding a, a butcher knife in his hand. What was he doing? Waving it straight well, Like I said, when I got there, he was basically standing still. He wasn't moving at all. He was standing there and had the, the butcher knife held out in front of him and looking directly at me. And there weren't any children around at the time, so I, every, everyone had you know, ran away and got, got uh, got in a safe safe place did he say anything to you at that point he did not say a word just stood still looking straight at me it's just the two of you at that point i couldn't tell you i was just i was just focused on on the uh subject with the knife what'd you do next well like i said i could tell there was no other children in danger at the time because the the teachers and the kitchen staff had already secured them behind doors and you know, did did what they were supposed to do, and so I was focusing on him. And like I said, he was not moving; he was just standing there with a the knife straight out in front of me. So I I went for my aspaton, which is a metal pipe, and I decided that since he wasn't making any aggressive moves toward me, that I would try and just disarm him or get him to lay the knife down. Uh, you know, go with that approach first. Uh, according to the, what we got from Captain Sippers, he did not do that. Well, I, I ordered him the first time to drop the knife, and he stood there with it out in front of him. And he, he eventually lowered it down by his side, but he didn't drop the knife. So after two more times of commanding him to drop the knife and he wasn't making any more moves, I stepped toward him and did a couple strikes with Aspaton. He dropped the knife then. While this was happening, Never said a word. Did you know who it was? Uh, I know the kids were saying his name, but I, I wasn't sure because it was a full face mask. Can you describe the mask? It looked like a, uh, a Joker clown type mask, a rubber mask. Mm -hmm. um, once he dropped this, did he allow you to just take him and take him all over? Yes, he did. He, he just stood there and I, I took him and and put him against the wall and patted him down for additional weapons and he didn't have anything else on his person. I know um, officers learn several training methods to disarm someone. Um, tell me why you chose the ASP uh, versus any of the other methods you could have used. Well, you're right. Uh, a, a person with a knife, we're basically trained that, that we can use up to and including deadly force. But I felt that since there was no other children around him and no one was in immediate danger that I would start at the lower end of the of the use of force continuum and which would be the half the time. Nothing nothing serious at all. This this is basically a, a good school and we really don't have that many problems here. Nothing Definitely nothing like that.